I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello everybody, welcome to Cinema Royale, where we keep it classy most of the time. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and let me introduce you to the Brotherhood of Cinema here. First off, we've got Cody Klusner. Good evening, everybody, and remember, all proceeds tonight go towards the An- the Albino Mine Incorporation. Remember, a poor mine is a terrible thing to waste. And... Live from Vegas, it's Andy's. Snyder? Snyder? Yeah. Snyder? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. That's, uh... I'm, I'm blanking. It's late. I'm sorry. My brain is fried from watching too many 2017 movies. He was going for a very long epic pause. <laughs> hey, oh, One night only, live from Las Vegas, it's Andy Snyder. There we go. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so today's episode is our third annual uh, year recap. So we're recapping the year of 2017. Uh, this year, compared to the previous years, it's a little mixed. Um, there's some decent ones out there. There's some movies to talk about, but it wasn't, for me, the best compared. I think the best year is uh, 2015 was a great year in film for me. I thought that was a great year. 2016 was okay, but this year, eh. Uh, so tonight we have eight categories to go through. We have Biggest Disappointment, Pleasant Surprise, uh, Perfect Stream, which includes uh, a streaming show, either on Netflix or any other streaming platform. Um, maybe it could be a movie as well for Perfect Streaming. Uh, Hidden Gem, Laughably Bad, Most Forgettable, Best and Worst. So, uh... We shall start off with the obvious one first being Biggest Disappointment. This is where we go into a movie expecting a lot from it, and we were just kind of let down from uh, after watching it. So, Cody, what is your biggest disappointment of 2017? Well, it is probably no surprise. I've probably said it before the times. That would be Beauty and the Beast. Biggest disappointment. Because after coming off of Jungle Book, I was thinking... Maybe they got it right this time. They know how to adapt their stuff now, how to make it live action. And Beauty Beast being one of their biggest animated hits, maybe it could do good. Until I heard the freaking soundtrack and I thought, oh, God. <laughs> Fail. I did not watch it, so. And it, and I'm not yeah. say, it had a pretty good cast to boot. It had a pretty good cast. Uh-huh. Okay. Is that all you want to say about it? Oh, well, well, what can I say other the fact that half the cast, when they're in human form, look freaking ridiculous? I mean, I know French and the time periods, but they, in the beginning, they look like freaking clowns! They look like snotty French clowns! I just want to punch the snake face little bastards, and the beast looked like normal human. They just rubbed fur on his face. Emma Watson, auto-tune... Disney, yeah. <laughs> if, if, Next you, victim. if you Next want, victim. if you want to see another Emma Watson movie, you should check out The Circle. Yes. <laughs> Did it like her and Beauty and the Beast? Check out The Circle. You might be surprised. Um, she doesn't sing. Yes, she doesn't. Um, Andy, what is your biggest point, disappointment of the year? Uh, my biggest disappointment came. Sorry, I accidentally muted myself. Uh, came with It Comes at Night. Ah, uh, I knew that would pop up. So that one, you know, gets all this, like, buzz. Like, oh, it's so good. It's getting this great critical reception. And the trailers don't really tell you much. Uh, so I was calling, you know, this new type of horror movie, as we talked about uh, in the warm-up. There's been some really good horror movies recently. Uh, and so I thought, okay, maybe this is another one. And you go in, and I don't... I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's whatever, hour and a half, two hours of you don't really know anything that's happening. You never get any answers at all. The characters don't develop or change throughout the entire course of the movie. It's depressing and 
bad things happen and that's it. Then it's over. And you're just like, huh, okay. It's all still like, what happened? Yeah, doing the minimalist thing is okay, but one of the, the key aspects of the movie was never answered of uh, like this door gets open and it causes this whole well, like keep the door locked at all times or else you know they'll get in and they'll get you or whatever and the door gets open and which leads to this downward spiral of stuff and this big like who opened the door but you never know who opened the door like why why did we not know this just nothing is answered nothing at all so I found it more boring than anything I noticed that's also on Prime Video. I was like, scrolling through, I was like, oh, it's okay. I will skip that. <laughs> hey, people have liked it, just it wasn't for me. Yeah, I don't normally. I mean, I try to watch horror, but not. I don't know. Any. I mean, I was gonna. I was. Ah, that's another one I was gonna mention, but I forgot to mention was uh, Happy Death Day. It was another one I wanted to see, but I just like, is it Groghog's Day with murder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I wanted to see that too, actually. I never got around. <sighs> I was like, ugh. So, uh, uh, my biggest disappointment of the year was Kingsman. The hmm. Golden Circle. Um, the, the first movie is spectacular. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, the second movie just... They... Spoilers, if you have not seen these movies, by the way. Um, they blew up the headquarters... The main villain. The main <laughs> villain is played by Julianne Moore, and she, and she does a decent amount of t time being creepy as a villain, especially in Poppyland. Uh, <laughs> it, it, she's so fascinated with the fifties for some strange reason, and she's got these two robot robot dogs, and they're named Benny and Jet, because she, oh, guess what? She stole. She kidnapped Elton John to perform for her. Elton John's in this movie. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> Don't forget, he beats up people. Yeah. He does it, it, kung fu. He, he does. <laughs> he does. But <laughs> and then, like after the headquarters for Kingsman gets destroyed, they have to go to their cousin in America, Statesman, and it's just like got to go all the way to Kentucky, and just <laughs> one of them starts singing John Denver all of a sudden too, because John Denver is featured in the movie a lot too, and it's just like. Where is this going? I mean, I mean, Statesman has, it, you have like Channing Tatum there, and you got Jeff Bridges there, and you got Halle Berry being there, and it's just, um, Colin, F Colin First character, is completely wiped, like he has amnesia. And it's just like, what happened to the guy? He's, well, of course he comes back at the end of it, but it's just like, this is not good. I mean, the action's coming from the Statesman. I mean, there's a twist at the end that I was shocked about. I'm not going to reveal that twist, what happens, but it's just like, it's so stupid. It's like, I, I'm excited to see what they do for the spinoff for the Statesman, but, I mean, it's, the Statesman's obviously the best part of the movie, but it's just like, you had a good concept with the Kingsman. It's like, the second movie, you don't blow up those headquarters right away. The villain is like, boom, blow it up, dude. And then the whole circle... The whole circle thing being like, you, it's just, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I okay, I can I can see where you're going with that, but I can also say that I kind of did enjoy it. You know, I enjoyed it. I mean, yes, I rolled my eyes at Chang Ting's like, yeah, you can't get any more stereotypical American than that. But he's taken out five minutes in the game, so I'm like, yes, thank true. you. True, true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> And yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, like you said, the whole gold circle thing, I honestly didn't know what it was. I thought I had thought about what it was going to be in the movie, but it turned out to be something completely different and stupid, so it's like, well, that's a letdown. I mean, I mean, that's the thing, it's just, the villain is so weak, like, she's selling drugs, and that's, she's a drug dealer? I mean, can, can, I, can I just say something else? Call me a bastard if you want, but I kind of sided with the president in that movie. I was like, he's got a point. No, he yes. He had a point. <laughs> no. Exactly. Yes. 
I agreed. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, like, weird. And I thought Samuel Jackson did a better job in the first movie. Let's be honest. Well, well, he, did, well he was in this movie. They, they brought him back for, like, a five-minute cameo. A five-second cameo. God, that was brief. That was so brief. Um, yeah, I just... I just... Yeah, I mean... I hope the Kingsman franchise gets a little bit lifted up better. I mean, I know they're trying to parody, like, spy movies, like the like Roger Moore era of, of James Bond movies. I know they're trying to do that with satire, and I understand that. I think with this one, it kind of teeters into that a little bit more, especially, you know, how they do things. So, I mean, I was disappointed by it. Yeah, it was nowhere near as good as I mean, I still enjoyed it. Uh, it's not one that I bought, and I, I probably won't. Uh, yeah. But I enjoyed it enough. But it just—it's not anywhere near the first, the level of the first. Oh yeah, one. oh yeah. Like there, there's no memorable like scenes like for me. Like when you think of the first movie, you think of the church scene, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you think of uh, the finale with the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, it's just... Alright, so let's get surprised with our pleasant surprise of the year. Cody, what is <laughs> what is a movie that surprised you this past year, Cody? Well, uh, I'm gonna say it. Uh, Wonder Woman? That, that really did surprise me. <laughs> because, I'm not gonna lie, DC does not have a very good track record with their movies. Mm-hmm. And when I saw the trailers, I'm thinking... This is a copycat of Captain America First Avenger, isn't it? Because when you look at it, kind mm-hmm. of does that mm-hmm. a bit. But you know, I was surprised. You know, they actually flushed out a character. They flushed out a superhero. <laughs> I mean, this is the first time done it since, what, Man of Steel? Yep. And, you know, it got an interesting cast, you know, and good, good more or less story with some great action scenes. And, you know, it's it, this is to, um, this is like, again, paraphrasing Disney's live action adaptation this is DC's Jungle Book it's the one good thing they've done so far <laughs> yeah that's a good way to say it and if there's only going to be one DC movie damn it it's going to be Wonder Woman yeah I uh I yeah I did watch it as well and I, it was good it was really good I mean Wonder Woman is basically the Captain America of the DC universe so, I mean, I can't I agree. <laughs> epic silence is epic. <laughs> Go check out Wonder Woman if you haven't already. Mm. Support that movie and tell them, just say, hey, can't wait for that sequel. Give me that secret. Your story. Well, they already canceled Justice League 2. Yeah. Uh, So, Andy, what is your pleasant surprise of the year? Pleasant surprise is The Foreigner. Uh, Oh, okay. So, I will say this. It wasn't exactly what I expected. Uh, It wasn't as much of a return to Jackie Chan's action roots. Right. Uh, It was much more of a like thrillery type of thing but it had a, it had a couple action sequences uh but you know the thing being if you've watched any jackie chan movie in the past i don't know decade it has been sorry jackie pretty atrocious uh it's been, it's been really poor quality uh for a, a long time uh since i mean god i don't know rush hour 2 i liked rush hour 2 i think it was really good uh there might have been another one or two after that, but you know, for the most part, he's just not made good movies. He made a movie with like Johnny Knoxville, and that tells you right yes. there how good it is. Yep, I saw that uh, last year. Yep, Skip Trace. Yeah. yeah, that one. And so, you know, I went into the foreigner. You know, it's just going to be another, you know, a Jackie Chan, you know, crapper. But it was it was surprisingly good. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard mixed things about it, to be honest. I mean, not a lot of people were clamming for it. Um, 
Don't go into it expecting an action movie. I mean, that's, I think, we're you know, flipping some people up. But Jackie Chan does fine with the acting. You know, it's the most acting I think I've ever seen him do in a movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, and, you if know, you were the, American in the 90s, like I was, you grew up watching Jackie Chan movies, there were two things they always did. Funny, and lots of kung fu action scenes that looked awesome. So if you want to see more, see how straight Jackie Chan can play it, I would, yeah, highly recommend The Foreigner. Yeah. I mean, it's the same director who has directed Bond films, Martin Campbell. Uh, like Goldeneye. Goldeneye yeah. and Casino Royale, so yeah. with that type and of... And Pierce Brosnan's in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Experience much? Um, so yeah, that's... I have yet to see that. I really wanted to see that, so... Yeah, definitely worth checking out. I have the most uh, possible uh, surprise ever. I actually bought the DVD for it. Done. Da -da 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 -da. A dog's purpose. What? <laughs> Remember this movie from last year exactly? Um. Okay, so uh, my mother actually wanted to see this. And we watched it together, and I got emotional. I actually cared for what the movie was trying to do. Uh, so, TMZ, don't ever trust them, because TMZ posted the, quote, controversial video behind the scenes of a dog in the water just, like, trying to survive or resist it. And they edited it to confuse the viewers like i don't know why they did it and that's why i stayed away from it because everyone say oh it was animal cruelty animal cruelty and it's just like yeah that's bad i mean even when we uh did the dennis quaid episode because dennis quaid is in this movie we didn't talk about it as much so it was just like ooh, kind of stay away from it. the controversy and uh so i watched it and it, it's a decent movie it's it's decent it's based on a book if you love dogs, it is a decent, like, heartwarming story. Uh, Josh Gad plays the voice of the dog. Okay, so basically, A Dog's Purpose is about a dog who is being reincarnated as a different dog each lifetime he lives. So he starts out as... It's like... <laughs> I even tweeted about this. It's like, it's Doctor Who with dogs. <laughs> <laughs> or Doctor Who. Um... <laughs> it's okay because the first first dog uh, is a puppy and he gets euthanized. Boom! Second dog, uh, he becomes a family dog. Um, so it goes through like through the fifties and sixties through like now. So it goes through each era. So you see each dog a different era. So in the sixties he was like a red retriever. Uh, in the 70s, he was, late 70s, early 80s, he was a German Shepherd police dog. In the 80s, he's a Corgi. <laughs> um, in, in, like, and they go to a recent one where he's, like, a St. Bernard mix. Uh, Josh Gad does a funny, like, uh, voiceover for each, well, it's the same dog, but it's, like, the same soul, different dog each time. And it's, like, very funny how the dog's like, huh, what are you trying to say to me? What, I can't, what, you want me to do this? Ooh, there's food, food, food. It's kind of funny how it goes around with life. I, if you like a heartwarming, uh, movie, and if you love dogs, A Dog's Purpose will surprise you the most. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people weren't expecting that, so there's your surprise for you. That was surprising. <laughs> so, <laughs> that one wasn't even off my radar to watch at all i mean i didn't even <laughs> well it came out in january of last year so that's where the most forgotten movies we'll get into which we'll get into later but let's talk about streaming uh streaming is very much a big deal for all of us with netflix and any of the other stream services we watch so this category perfect streaming can involve a TV show you started to watch on the platform and got hooked onto and you kept on watching, binge watching, or it could be a movie that was on streaming. So, Cody, what was the perfect streaming for you? Well, 
if I had to, I'm kind of narrowed down between two. Uh, one was one that was picked up by Netflix was Black Mirror, which was picked up on its third se- which Netflix picked up and started producing on its third season and released its fourth season this year. Mm-hmm. But if I have to go for the best, I think I'm going to go with Netflix adaptation of a series of unfortunate events. Ah, because, okay. Because after what other thing with Jim Carrey did, <laughs> and it's my favorite book series, it is. And Netflix actually did a pretty good job with it. You know, they adapted the first four the first four yeah, the first four books into the first season. Uh second season is coming up this year and I cringed a bit when I heard some of the when I when I heard some of the cast, like Neil Patrick Harris is playing the villain Count Olaf, I was like Oh god, it's gonna be Jim Carrey all over again, don't but no, he actually plays it pretty good. And the biggest surprise is Patrick Walbur- Patrick Warburton, who plays the narrator in the Lim- Snicket. Now, again, when I first saw him, I was like, he's going to play it stupid, isn't he? That would be funny, isn't he? But he plays it straight. It's like he's he, he could be, if they ever revamp again, the Twilight Zone, he should be the opening narrator, you know? Has he, seriously, he plays it so freaking straight, you know, it's almost like you believe him. <sighs> okay. okay. Uh, Andy, what was your uh, perfect streaming of the year? Uh, well, I would also have to go with the show. Uh, the two streaming original movies I saw weren't that good to make it to the list, uh, Mm -hmm. which I mentioned before. So the show I picked is Netflix's The Punisher. uh, Which was... So, uh, I don't know, have you guys kept up with the Marvel? I mean, I don't know how many people have kept up with the Marvel shows on Netflix, but Daredevil, I I thought, was great. Like, Daredevil started, I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. And then we had Daredevil Season 2. So I also thought was great, including The Punisher. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then yeah, Jessica Jones was really good. But then like Luke Cage and Iron Fist and uh, Defenders have all kind of like gone down and down and down, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay. Um, you know they're they're not terrible. Right. I still enjoy watching them, but I I felt like they kind of dropped in quality from where it all began. Uh, but The Punisher for me like brought it right back up. It's actually my favorite uh, Marvel Netflix show now over daredevil um it has a solid story great acting uh it's much more real world based you know there's no mythical ninjas and magic powers or anything like that which there's nothing wrong with that but it's just a different kind of show than any of the others that they've created uh you know dealing with like ptsd and you know there's emotional moments and there's funny moments and there's plenty of action moments and blood and gore I mean, it's everything Corey, that, it's candy that an action lover could desire uh so that for me was my perfect streaming original this year mm-hmm. okay uh so mine uh and i'm i'm actually surprised that we did not mention uh stranger things 2 season 2 mm-hmm. that came out mm-hmm. this year uh mm-hmm. Last year, it was a very much big thing because uh, a lot of people, like, we talked about that. Uh, last year, and I think this year as well, They, uh, I was watching Voltron, the Legendary Defender. That was my pick from last year, and I think they did another season this year as well. And that wasn't a thing for me this year. Strange Things 2 was okay. Um, the one I discovered uh, uh, is not original from Netflix, but it got picked up by Netflix to stream... Uh, season one, and I started watching season one, and then I got hooked on to season two of it when it was on regular TV, and uh, so that show was Riverdale. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Riverdale. I like that. Riverdale was really, it's really good. It's like a like a mystery, uh, soap opera kind of show, and I love those types of shows. It's kind of like a Twin Peaks feel to it, and it's Archie. In the gang, it's fucking Archie. That's the thing that gets me the most. It's, um, God, Archie. 
they cast it so well. I mean, you got Archie, you got Betty and Veronica. God damn, Betty and Veronica. Uh. <laughs> I mean, Dark Betty. If you watch the show, Dark Betty is like, you go for that. Oh my god. I can't wait to see what they do uh, when they come back. They come back on the, on the 17th this month. I can't wait to see what's going on with Riverdale. Um, yeah, that's a good one. That I didn't pick up that one. I avoid because it looked like some like high school something. I was like, eh, I'm not interested in that. And then David Rose uh, told me I should really give it a chance. I was like, fine. You know, we usually have pretty similar tastes, so I gave it a shot. And yeah, that was. I've been watching it ever since. Oh man, like uh, Cole Cole Sprouse as Jughead. Oh my god, Jughead is my character. He's my favorite character. He's so me. <laughs> I'm I'm a weirdo. I'm not the normal one. <laughs> um, man, it's just yeah. I'm not gonna reveal much because if you watch the show, you'll get to see what happens. It's just I just I love the whole soap opera element to it. There's and then there's the cast is great. Funny thing is the guy who plays Archie, I think AJ, he also is the teen in A Dog's Purpose. So. Huh. Oh. So you get, I was watching The Dog's Purpose, like, oh, fuck, he's Archie. Archie's in this movie. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, Riverdale, my God, I love it so much. So uh, check out Riverdale if you're into Archie. And actually, I'm like very excited to see um, Sabrina. They're doing Sabrina on Netflix. Oh, yeah, I heard that. They yeah. just they just casted her, too. They just announced that. I don't know who the actress's name is, but she looks the part, so I can't wait to see how it's going to be a darker Sabrina, so... I am sort of excited for that. So, um, uh, now we go to The Hidden Gem, which is a movie or something else, like a show maybe. I don't know. It's mostly about movies. Um, so, A Hidden Gem being something that's very much under the radar and nobody's talking about it kind of thing. And I want to start this off because this kind of piggybacks off of Riverdale in a way because it shares some kind of connection. Um, uh, this year, uh, 2017 was the year of the Sprouse brothers. Uh, Cole was Jughead in Riverdale. Dylan came back to acting. Dylan Sprouse, the other half of the Sprouse brothers, took a break from acting. And he came back to act in an independent movie that went straight to uh, On Demand called Dismissed. Dismissed is a movie, uh... Dylan plays this obsessed, psychopathic student who gets his way. He uh, he goes, he gets transferred to the school, and his teacher, he's very smart, very intellectual. He, when he's given an assignment to write an essay, he drops off this big booklet, and it's like, like very much a big, like a book, while other students just give a little short paper um so it was about i think shakespeare related uh, in the essay and the teacher gave him a b he's normally a student and he got really he's he's really pissed off about it and throughout the whole movie you see him go crazy as he's sabotaging the teacher's life he's going through everything to get him fired from his job to towards the end hurting his family um he goes so far to get that A for his essay that he wrote. Um, my God, it's perfect that he came back. This was just, he's so crazy. He's so diabolical. Um, there's even one point where he's trying to tell a fellow student in class to seduce the teacher, and she goes with it. And it's kind of a spoiler, uh, he ends up killing her to cause this phenomenon and be like, oh, this is a mur this is a suicide, but he actually murdered a person. So it's like this crazy roller coaster psychological thriller. You gotta check out. It's 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 phenomenal. Like if you liked what Jughead uh, in Riverdale was, it's not like that, but the sp like oh, I love it so much. It's such a hidden gem. Nobody nobody talked about it. Like. I even like tweeted about it, and uh, the actress who played that, uh, the actress, for, I forgot her name, but the actress in the movie actually liked it on Twitter, so people, it's like it was pretty cool getting that recognition. It's like so, 
you have to go check out Dismissed. It's a decent thriller movie. Yeah, I'd never even heard of that. It is, is yeah, it's straight to video. Uh, didn't go in the theaters, just, I was looking it up, and I was, like I said, I'm a fan of the, uh, the Sprouse Brothers. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Dylan Sprouse's, like, last acting, um, credit before, like, taking a break was Kung Fu Magoo. What? <laughs> he, he voiced what? the, he voiced a character in an animated film called Kung Fu Magoo. <laughs> This is like his last credit before taking a break. It was so weird. I was like, oh, I can kind of see why you took a break from acting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're back. And Dylan is now acting in full force. He's got another project coming in. And I mean, then his brothers are doing Jughead and Riverdale. Their brothers are back. So if you want to see what they're doing ever since Sweet Life of Zach Cody, check them out. <laughs> check them out. <laughs> They have grown. They are older. They have. They are adults now. Uh, um, Cody, what is your hidden gem of twenty seventeen? Well, it kind of is more of a hidden gem that started in twenty sixteen, but I didn't find about it till it started this year. It's a, an it's an anthology horror series, much like um, American Horror Story. You know. It's called Channel Zero. It airs on Sci-Fi. I know, a good thing on Sci-Fi. Everyone, just take a minute, breathe that in. And you know, I like American Horror Story, and I watch this like, okay, they're ripping them off, but it's actually pretty good. You know, uh, each season is a self-contained story, and unlike American Horror Story, they get different actors for each season. They don't keep, you know, reusing the same actors playing different characters. And yeah, it's. Not that bad. I mean, each season contains about six episodes, so relatively short. But yeah, if you if you like uh, American Horror Story, then I highly recommend checking this out. A third season is greenlit to air, ooh, February this year. Oh, well, I know I'm gonna be watching. Oh, it's produced by Max Landis. Mhm. Mm I mean, yeah. I mean, the same guy who wrote uh, Bright and. Did do all that shit. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, I see what you mean. Okay. I can dig that. I definitely, uh... Yeah. Uh, Andy, what is your hidden gem of 2017? Well, I, I sort of have two. Okay. One TV show and one movie. Okay. Uh, so the TV show, I'll just say real quick. I won't go too in-depth. Right. It's a Netflix original... That I, I feel like it kind of fell under the radar. I mentioned it once in the group chat. Dark. Uh, it's German language. It's picking up. A lot of people are talking about it now. It's starting to? Okay. It's starting to pick uh, up now. I mean, I've seen people talk about it now. Yeah. It's it's one of the... It's like a mystery, you know, in a small town. Uh, it got... When I first heard about it, people were comparing it to Stranger Things, but that's not really accurate at all. Not even a little bit. I mean, it's... Part of it takes place in the 80s, so that's probably the closest you get to Stranger Things. Um, but yeah, it's much more adult. Uh, uh, you know, this is not for kids at all. Uh, but very good. I recommend checking it out. Uh, but the movie, uh, which I think was technically originally released in 2016, but didn't get the wider release till 17, uh, is Free Fire. You guys oh, oh. Free Fire? Yeah, 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 I think so. I think yeah. so. It, it's on Prime Video. I was just watching yeah. part of it. I... That one, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's different from pretty much any movie I've seen before. I mean, it's more or less, it's a 90-minute movie, and about 80 minutes of that is a prolonged shootout. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not like some balls-of-the-walls -balls, like action shootout. It's this kind of long distance taking like pot shots at each other you know it's it's funny it's violent uh it's inter it's just one of those you know you have the whole the ensemble cast uh each with their role to play and mm -hmm. um they all do a great job i mean charlotte charlotte copley however you pronounce his name the south african mm -hmm. uh district nine yeah. um you know he's in it he does a great job as he 
really always does, I think. Um, you know, Brie Larson. Yeah. Army Hammer. I mean, there, there's all these people in it that uh, you probably recognize. And they... It was just... It was... Watching it in the theater, not knowing a whole lot about it, was one of the more fun experiences I had in a theater. It was just... It was just a fun movie. Yeah, so. it's... I, yeah, it was something I was considering to put on my list, but... Uh, indeed... Uh, it, it was released this year, by the way. Um, okay. I believe it was last year, uh, 2016, at a film festival there, counting. But oh. it came out okay. in the UK on March 31st and the US on April 21st. So oh, There you go. So, yeah, Thank Free you. Fire is definitely, uh, I agree, very much a good... It's, it's, uh, it was produced by um, Scorsese. Yeah, yeah, I just so I just rewatched it over uh, New Year's, and I noticed that. I was like, holy crap, Scorsese. Yeah, he produced it, so I uh, totally agree. Um, laughably bad, so there's a distinction here. Uh, so this ain't the worst. It's just a movie that it's just it's makes you laugh. Uh, just making you think, wow, this is bad. I'm just, <laughs> what is going on with this movie? Um, Cody, what is the movie that is laughably bad? Well, on that front, again, I'm going to go with a horror movie with Happy Death Day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were just talking about that. Yeah, I just... <laughs> <laughs> <We're good>. Sorry, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, in case you're wondering, yes, this is basically a horror version of Groundhog Day. In fact... In the end of the movie, they do reference Groundhog Day by name. So meta. It's like, yes, yes, this, yes, people, this is what you're ripping off. We're sorry. It's, it's just, it's, it's like they surround this movie by, like, the dumb blonde slasher movies and say, let's focus a whole movie around her, where she relives the day every day, and gets killed by a reject from one of the Purge movies. I'm sitting there going, I was like, I did not have any expectations of being scared at all. But I did laugh my ass off a bit. I was like, <laughs> like, keep going again, keep going again. Get more creative. Come on, go jigsaw on her ass. You know, kill her in creative ways. But yeah, it was like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was so bad. It was like predictable. I, I will say this. The ending kind of caught me off guard. It was kind of disappointing because, but you know. It was, a, it was a fun little guilty pleasure. If you're a bit of a gore whore, you know, you like your carnage candy, you're going to like this movie. Okay. Um, I'll go this time, and uh, just saw this one today. Uh, Laughly Bad. God. Geostorm. <laughs> uh, Geostorm. Wait, say that again? Geostorm. Oh, oh Geostorm. Oh, <laughs> Probably expecting a disaster movie, but it's not that at all. I I skipped that one. I oh my god. I was like I was I was expecting a disaster movie because it shows that in the trailer. You see all the disaster shit and it's all there. But um actually if you read behind the scenes of it, um uh, it was supposed to be produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, but he dropped it. Uh, or actually, no, Jerry Bruckheimer came back to produce it because it got such a bad test screening, so they reshoot a lot of things. And it was supposed to be released in 2016, but they gave that uh, time slot to Batman v Superman, because it is a Warner Bros. movie. And then it got pushed back to 2017. And, fun fact, uh, According to the cast and crew, uh, Gerard Bartler forgot his lines. Kept forgetting his lines. Really? <laughs> so, I read that. I was like, really? He kept forgetting his lines this movie? <laughs> um, what, did they pass out the script while they were shooting the first days? Like, here's the script. Get in front of the camera. Go! <laughs> he just, ah. Uh, I mean, so, it, it's so stupid. It is so... Like, I'm watching it and I'm thinking, this is supposed to be a disaster movie, right? It's a movie about a satellite. So, okay. Uh, in the future, we have somewhat control over the weather. Like, their satellites um, 
all around Earth, and if there's, like, a storm, there'd be, like, uh, a thing that shoots out these weather pellets that would kind of stop it. You know, if it's, it was, like, raining, it'll stop it. If it would be a hurricane, it'll stop it. If it'd be, like, a flood, it'll stop it. Just like that. Um, if it's, like, cold, it'll be warmer. If it's, like, hot, it'd be colder. So all those scenes you see with um, the ice, there's an ice scene in there, and it's, like, in Afghanistan. So the temperature went from hot to cold and freeze. There's a scene in Russia where it's cold and it gets really hot. So satellite is, like, malfunctioning. That's what I thought at first, but it it's a conspiracy. There's sabotage within the, in, in, within the station. So Gerard Butler has to go up to the station, which he cr- kind of created, you know, for the whole society, you know, kind of helped out the society. He has to go up there and figure out who has been sabotaging the satellite, who put the virus on the satellite to go crazy. And that's where you see all the scenes where it's all disaster. So, um... It's like, it doesn't show the scenes that much. It's, just, it's all about blah, 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 blah. We have to find the the chip or whatever, the virus. We got to go over here on the satellite. And it's like, but there's disaster on Earth. Focus on that. Focus on that. <laughs> and you see it for like brief seconds. It's just like, and then, uh, uh, spoiler alert, the uh, main bad guy who is behind all of it is played by Ed Harris. If you know Ed Harris, he is also was uh, the guy f- from Snowpiercer, the conductor. Oh, that's been a while since I've seen that one. I couldn't remember that. Yeah, so, um, it is so. I was like laughing because it's just so ridiculous. Like, there's a scene in Hong Kong where, oh my god, so it's so hot in Hong Kong. This guy's like shopping. And the cat, there's like, he goes out and buys eggs. He drops the eggs on the on the ground and they start sizzling. Shh, because it's that hot in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, it's so hot. And all of a sudden, flames started to go out of the ground. <laughs> it's like, and then there's this, this whole scene where the, the guy's driving away from it. Like trying to run away from the flames going out of the ground. <laughs> and it starts getting crazy. Like, the the disaster part is just so horrible because the CGI. Oh, my God, the CGI. Oh, God. (laughs) It's so bad because you can see the water kind of flowing, and it's just, like, really bad CGI for the weather. Um, It's so bad, but it's so laughably bad. Do not check out Geostorm (laughs) unless you really want to. I mean, there hasn't been a good disaster movie in recent years, so I was, like, hoping for a good disaster movie, but it's not a disaster movie. It's a lie to you. Um, so, Andy, what is your laughing bad movie? Uh, well, speaking of Hong Kong, uh, I guess more like China, uh, The Great Wall. Oh. So, it was one... So, the director, Yi Mao Zhang, has made some good, uh... Hong Kong films, Hero, I don't know if you ever saw Hero, the Jet Li was in uh, back in the early 2000s. That was mm-hmm. the first one of his that I saw. I mean, really good. Uh, but he always has you know, a way with like color and cinematography. I mean, he has a really great eye, I think. Uh, but anyway, fast forward to Great Wall. Holy hell, that was a mess. <laughs> no, <laughs> was, no. he, he still you know, had his way with colors and it was, there were certain parts that were kind of you know, pretty to look at, you know, look really cool, but the CGI was awful for the monsters. The story was terrible. Matt Damon's accent was constantly changing. Like, he would not, he would talk like himself. Like, he would sound like normal Matt Damon in one scene, and then literally the next scene, he would have some weird, like, pseudo-Scottish accent or something you couldn't really place, and then he'd go back to himself, like his normal self, and then he'd just uh, he could, um, and yeah, the story. Uh oh, with aliens from space. <laughs> are that's what the Great Wall was built to protect the Chinese people from was aliens from space. 
or something ridiculous. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> and that's why the was made. They heard half a conversation and thought, we'll go with all that. You heard half a conversation? You were kind of breaking up there, dude. Oh, man. The Wi Fi kind of like broke it up a bit, but it was kind of probably out of the way it stopped and just like the plot and aliens. The Great Wall was predicted. Aliens, it was kind of perfect. Well. <laughs> What you may have missed is me complaining about uh, Matt Damon's accent. <laughs> yeah, keep changing it. We got that pet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was. I don't know when. When you lost me. Uh, but yeah. Uh, if you want to see another Matt Damon movie that came out in 2017, go ahead check out Downsizing. Then. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> Oh, thank God. <laughs> I didn't see it, but I saw the trailers of it. I was like, okay, another Matt Damon movie. Downsizing. Uh, I, saw, I saw the trailer for The Great Wall, and I was like, this is going to be Gods of Egypt all over again. Historically inaccurate. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I uh, mean, I'm cool if they want to play a little with, like, myth and kind of merge the realities, but, man, you got to do it well. Neither of those two, Gods of Egypt or Great Wall, they're just... It's just a mess. Just an incoherent mess. Yeah. Um, crap, I forgot to mention that. I don't know if there's anything. But I forgot to mention, I don't know mention, god damn it, there was a movie that I watched as well. Uh, well, I actually did go see Jungle, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Oh. <laughs> it's, hey, it's in good hands. It's good. A guy blows up from eating a piece of cake. That's one of his weaknesses. It's one of his video game weaknesses. That's... Cake. <laughs> That's funny. It is. It's so yeah, funny. Because <laughs> one of the things Robin Williams forgot to mention when he was mentioning how scary the jungle was, it's cake. Watch out. <laughs> it's Why cholesterol. It's, it's a bit different, Cody. It's a bit different. I mean, the jungle's there, but... For the characters, it's a video game, so the cake is pretty much a weakness for one of the characters. Can you answer me? Because I refuse to watch this movie. It's on my blacklist. I will never see this movie. They find the board game, right? How yep. the hell did you go from board game to a rejected Atari 2600? So, How does that work? So it's really in the opening scene. It's It actually tells you 1996, so it's right after the first movie. And the beach is different, because I think at the end of the original movie uh it's like in some foreign country like france maybe mm -hmm. so but here it's in america somehow so the board came back to america on a beach and some guy found it brings it home they mind you it's the 90s so mm -hmm. uh gives it to his son he's like here son it's a game and it's like he's like dude board game who plays board games anymore puts it on uh, the shelf and He's playing video games. I don't know what game it was. It was like a PlayStation or something, because of course it's Sony. So he's playing a game. And all of a sudden, Jumanji, the game starts to morph into the video game console because of that influence. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense now. So it makes sense. But I don't know how the hell that console... I mean, that leads up to like another character you see later on in the movie because he gets sucked into the... Because he actually sees Jumanji, the game. He actually puts it up and plays it and he gets sucked into the game. Mm. And he's that one character in the... Uh, Nick Jonas plays him in the movie, In the Jungle. So he's that character. Repeat that last name again? Nick Jonas, one of the Jonas brothers. And he does a decent job at the... It's... He, he's... <laughs> he, was, he was the one in Scream Queens, wasn't he? <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think Nick Jonas was in the Scream Queens. Queens, the first season, was actually pretty good. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it starts off like the Breakfast Club, of course, and they get sucked into the game, they play the avatars, and, I mean, it's funny. It's so funny. Jack Black playing a Instagram phone-obsessed girl, teen girl, is hilarious. <laughs> he steals the whole movie. <laughs> it pays homage to the first movie. It does. They do. They, they talk about um, Robin Williams' character, because he... Uh, they, stay in the house that he built, you know, and there's mention of uh, the game and all that stuff. So it's 
I just want to mention that it's not on the list here, but I just I forgot to mention that because I didn't know it was on your guys' list at all. So, a little sidetrack. I'm sorry, but I just want to mention that <laughs> because uh, we're going to our most forgettable category. So this is a film that we've watched and we totally forgot about it. <laughs> so, Cody, what is your most forgettable movie of 2017? Uh, uh, well, most forgettable, because the only thing I can remember from this movie was Michael Fassbender. That's the only thing I remember, and the movie is Alien Covenant. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I had high hopes going into this movie. You know, I really wanted this to be good. You know, Ridley Scott, you know, get back to what you were doing before. Make it great again. He, he stated before that the next movie he'll be working on is a Prometheus sequel that has no relation to Alien. This movie is one half Prometheus sequel, second half Alien Origin. And, 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 I'm sorry, but if you actually like Prometheus, then you're not gonna like this because the one survivor, dead! Because the Michael Fassbender droid used her as an experiment to create the Xenomorphs. We actually see how they, they were created by a droid. I, uh, and I, but, but here's the good thing. Michael Fassbender has two parts. He plays two different droids. One's like a newer generation, and you know, him working off himself, you know. Michael, Michael Fassbender, actor Michael Fassbender. Most memorable scenes, especially when they get into a fight. Like, very good. That's good. But yeah. it's like, what now? You're remembering quite a bit of things for most being most forgettable. I know, I know, I know, but <laughs> like I said, the only memorable parts are Michael Fassbender. You know, any scene that's he in, that's the part you remember because you don't give two flying fucks about the rest of the cast. I don't even know who's in this movie. Okay. And you don't, and especially aliens, completely underplayed in this movie, completely underplayed. Alright, Andy, what is your most forgettable movie of 2017? That honor would go to Triple X, Return of Xander Cage. God damn, that's mine too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's mine. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> yes. I decided Amazing. not to see that one. I just decided not to see that one because, like, uh uh. Ben Diesel's too old. He's too old! He still does the fast movies, but, you know, this is a movie with Donnie Yen. And Tony Jaw, who yep. are two fantastic martial artists, <laughs> yep. who are that, yes. known for doing amazing stunt work and fight scenes, and it's just—I mean, Donnie Yen, I guess, was the only thing I remember. He fought some people in an airplane or something. I don't really remember any. I don't even remember that anymore. No. That's probably like the best part. But everything else was like generic, over-the-top action sequence after generic, over-the-top action sequence, one-liners, and that's about it. Yeah, they—they mm. they try to connect the uh, older movies like they even connected Stay of the Union with Ice Cube and he makes a cameo in it. <laughs> I remember that I, I remember that cameo. I was like Ice Cube, oh hey, there's a reference to that movie. So I guess it's like it's interesting and it, I don't know, it's just yeah, it's totally forgettable. I mean, it came out exactly 1 year ago in January, so just those G these January movies get forgotten forgotten a lot unless you rewatch them like it's yeah. like there's that one chick. I can't think of her name. Oh, this, she was also in John Wick Chapter Two. I can't think of her name, but she was in Triple uh -huh. X as well. What? Ruby Rose? Yes. Yeah, Ruby Rose was in. So Ruby Rose in John Wick Chapter Two plays the mute. Oh yes. I, I, I'm trying to think of who she was in Triple X. I don't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> in Triple X, yeah, she plays one of the members. Like she has this like crew short. Hair ish. She was a sniper, I think. <laughs> like, uh, she's so bad in that, and just, but I can't. I, I forgot about that completely. I, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't even remember like what I, I know. Vin Diesel did like the stunt skiing in. There's something in the water or something. I don't yeah, really remember. I don't remember either. It was so. It's. I mean, I've seen the original movie. I've, I haven't seen the second movie, but it was like this one because I had the. Mom and I, my mom and I love Vin Diesel, and I was just like, let's go see this one. And it's just like, eh. Yeah. 
You know yeah. what? That's probably why in John Wick Chapter 2, she was mute. She's like, I don't want people hearing my voice. I don't want them to remember that I was in that movie. I am surprised. be quiet. I'm surprised with the director that said, just shut your mouth. Your character is mute. Um, yeah, so... I, another movie I'm going to mention. God, she was in a lot of movies this year. What, what was the other one? It, I, I don't want to spoil the <laughs> upcoming... It uh, says okay. my uh, word okay. movie. Okay. So we'll... <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. There's another one. You've there's she's in one for for Guillermo, one for the worst. Okay. Uh yeah, yeah. God damn. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of like better like not what's next for Vin Diesel crossover. I really want. <laughs> so sorry, but I want to see Vin Diesel do a crossover between Triple X and Fast and the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that could actually work. He has a long lost twin brother that's triple X. Exactly, you know? that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Plays twin both roles. Yeah, it could work. Doable. It could work. It could work. it could work, and then just just thought of that idea. Uh, okay, so here we go. We're going to our the big top two, and we got about a half hour left. So is that bad? Not bad. Uh, first off, we're gonna do our best, as in our favorite movie of 2017, the best we've seen, like. You know, best with everything, you know. Uh, so, Cody, what is your best of 2017? Uh, I'm going to have to go with Logan. New Jackman's Final Wolverine movie. I thought that was... It, it came out in February, I believe. You know, right after the month of horrible movies. So it was a good way to start off the year. I took my father to go see that movie. And I'm not ashamed to say this, but he cried at the end. You know, it was powerful emotional ending. It was... And a rated R Wolverine movie. Yes! Thank you for taking the pay cut, Pew. You're worth it. But I think this is just like a good... If the new X-Men movies, the newer ones, where they're all younger, is like rebooting the series, this was probably the best way to end the original right here. Right. This was the best way to end it. You know, Patrick Stewart gave an amazing performance that everyone did. And lots of action, lots of fun. And... There's just a couple things. There's just one thing I wish they could have done. One thing is that when the little girl sees sees a Wolverine, sees Logan, just for like a split second, she imagines in him in the Wolverine costume. I'm just like, because she reads the comics and the movies, you know, and she reads the comic books, you know. It's like, come on, just for one second, let's see him in the actual costume, please. That's the thing that threw me off was the meta thing with the being the comics in the universe. It's just like, wait, 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 wait. X-Men comics, like, they turn into the comics, like, in the universe. Like, let's read these comics. It's, just, it's like, okay. Best, best not try to connect it to the other movies. Just don't. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, on the back of that, that was also my pick for <laughs> the oh. best. Oh, uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> wow. So, yeah, you know, the original X-Men films were sort of the kickoff of the new comic book movie era way back in 2000. Yep, was the two, first one. 2000 is correct, yes. Uh, yeah. 17 and, years. You know, I love those films, the first two, at least. I love those back in the day. Uh, and this was just a great send-off for Wolverine, for that character, for the universe. I mean, it had a lot of heart. It had, you know, the emotion. It had a great story. It had the characters, the actors, as you said, were all fantastic. Uh, and the action was great. You know, the rated R Wolverine was definitely the right choice. Um, and there was just... It was, it, it was just amazing. It was worth the money. Just to hear Patrick Stewart say fuck. <laughs> cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. And, well, Mike. and the best goes to. La, no, not La Land. Nope. <laughs> I was gonna. <laughs> Make out. And the best goes to. Wait, baby, baby drive? Nope. Uh, so my best, I just I had to do that joke because I knew that was gonna be a uh, My, the best that I saw was Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Did not see it. 
Blade Runner 2049, I, I was stoked when I saw the trailers. I was, because I am somewhat a fan of the first movie. I enjoyed it for what it was. I liked that universe. I liked what the character Decker was. And now seeing 2049, it's just like they expanded at it. And the director, Denis Villeneuve, he's done great directorial work. He's, I haven't seen Arrival that was last year, uh, 2016. Uh, so I've seen Sicario that came out in 2015. That was fantastic. And I haven't, I haven't seen the other ones yet, but Denis Villeneuve is like one of my favorite current directors. And my God, this movie is like, the story is interesting. Like I know how they expanded. It was interesting how they incorporate the original movie. And I mean, Jared Leto, I would say is a little bit creepy in his role. He plays like the new kind of, curator or inventor of the uh oh damn the robots the uh fuck I'm more... <laughs> oh I'm, I'm a fan of Blade Runner I don't even know the fucking robots names <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible so uh but no Harrison Ford comes back it's probably his best performance in recent years coming back as Deckard um way more so than Han Solo ooh <laughs> ah um, Ryan, Ryan Gosling, oh my god, he's one of my favorite actors currently, and he does a killer job playing this officer uh, named Kay, and he's kind of expl- Replicant. There it was, the Replicants. <laughs> <laughs> Replicants. It, it kind of teeters on what's human and what's Replicant, kind of what they did in the first movie, but it's a little expanded a little bit more, especially with the original movie, especially what Kay is, Ryan Gosling's character. Um, the score is fantastic. I don't know, I forgot who did the score, but the music is just amazing. The cinematography, Roger Deakins, Roger Ethan Deakins does amazing job. If you like cinematography, this is mind-blowing. It looks so good with the colors. Sometimes, uh, you go to, like, Vegas. <laughs> Vegas. They, they, actually, <laughs> they actually go to Vegas in this movie, and it's uh, it's all red, and you see the tones are red, and it's like dusty and cloudy, and that's where De- Decker tightened out all these years in Vegas in 2049. So it's cool to see that. And all of a sudden, you see um, Los Angeles all blues, and the colors just pop out at you, and it's just the future technology is pretty cool. And then there's like kind of a cool thing they do with um, there's like a AI kind of thing when Ryan Gosling's girlfriend is. It's like an AI kind of thing. It's kind of cool. They explore her character. But uh, it's way better than the original movie by far. Um, I wish there was more sequels of 80s movies. Like, they're way better than remakes, my God. Yeah. <laughs> give, give me a sequel to an 80s movie. Don't give me a remake of a movie. Like, uh, But it's stunning. Like, Blade Runner 2049, I'm I can't wait till it comes out on DVD. It comes out like a couple of weeks from now. I'm gonna buy that and watch the fuck out of it. So, um, now here's the thing: we're coming to the worst. And for me, I like I mentioned before, I haven't found a worst. I thought this year was meh. I didn't see any bad movies per se. They were just like okay. Mm-hmm. I know these guys have the worst. So, Cody, what is the worst of 2017 for you? Well, this was kind of developed as it went along during the year. First, it was going to be Tom and Jerry meet Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, but that was outbeaten by Netflix adaptation of Death Note, which was then outbeaten by Jigsaw. Now, Ugh. yeah. I, now, for the record, I love all the Saw movies. Me and my mother, we sit down and we watch them every month during October for Halloween. You know, we watch them all. We enjoy them. This, now I know, some people think the later sequels are a bit ridiculous. I can look past that, but this goes beyond ridiculous in every sense of the term. I mean, in some ways, it's, I would say it's a continuation, considering there's no connection to any of the other movies. To put forward, this is not a Jigsaw movie. This is a revenge story, plain and simple. I mean, that's all this dude is. This dude's setting up this whole jigsaw as type of thing is just to revenge. He doesn't follow any of the rules that Jigsaw would follow. And it 
I'm sorry, the guy uses lasers. He uses freaking lasers. Lasers. No. <laughs> that, that, that's wrong. That's, that's ridiculous. I mean, I mean, the only saving grace were the flashbacks that had Jigsaw in it. He was the only good thing about it. Because I was like, yes. Hi. Welcome back. Don't go. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, Andy, what is your worst of 2017? Uh, well, that would be, uh, another continuation of a series, much like Jigsaw was, uh, the final Resident Evil movie, Resident Evil, the final chapter, whatever the hell they ended up calling it. Oh, pl oh please, it's that a horror was... movie. We always know that final chapter just means postponed. It was so bad. Now, I, I haven't really been a... I've seen them all. I like the first one, uh, even though I didn't really follow the games at all. Uh, I still like the first one for what it was, but from there it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And this last one is just... The action is, like, incoherently filmed, so it's not even, like, good action to enjoy. You just can't understand what's happening in the action. The deaths are just kind of, like, bland. Like, oh, that person's dead, I guess. Okay. Like, you just don't, you never care about the characters. There's just, like, nothing good about that movie whatsoever. Just Paul W. Anderson showing off his wife, as usual. <laughs> like, in all his movies. Well, not all of them, but... Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but that's what he does with his movies. Like, he hasn't... I know I'm going to say this, and you're probably saying, hey, he had this one big movie, but... He doesn't. Ha he didn't have a lot of good movies for his career. I mean, Mortal Kombat. Eh, it was decent. It was okay. And then, you know, there's other ones. I like the first one. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't understand what's wrong with the sequel. They had double the budget of the first movie. How did they fuck it up? No. Oh, yeah. The sequel. That's a whole thing. That. Yeah. Oh man. So, I mean, he's still just directing. I don't know what he's still... I don't know what his next project is going to be. I mean, he's still... At least he's making video game movies, I guess. I don't... Uh, I don't know. Yeah. At least at least not all of the uh, Resident Evil movies were directed by him. There's one that wasn't. Oh. I uh, don't know that. Um, Extinct? wasn't directed by him, I think. Hmm. Um, Still wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the director's yeah. name. Um, Russell Malarkey, who directed Highlander. Oh, he oh directed... wow. Yeah. If I think... I think yeah, it's... well, he's still the writer of that movie, so his fingerprints are all over it. Oh, yeah. I mean, Paul, I mean, Paul, does, Paul W. S. Anderson and Michael Bay seem to be in the same boat when it comes to their movies. Speaking of which, his next movie coming out this year, direct to video, Death Race Beyond Anarchy. The fuck? <laughs> yeah. And he's given up Resident Evil, but that doesn't mean he has stopped video games, ladies and gentlemen. His next adaptation, Monster Hunter. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, he only re he only wrote and produced Death Race next one, but he's directing Monster mm -hmm. Hunter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Weird. He's a strange, strange man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somehow he gets loads and loads of money. We must fit. We must study him. Figure yeah. him out. I mean, <laughs> it's been a while since he's. Hold on. Hold the phone. Oh. <laughs> it's weird because it said 2016 and I was like, wait, this is... It was it premiered in Tokyo in 2016 and then it came in the US last year exactly in January. So, I was like, what the fuck? 2016? How's it 2016? Are you cheating? You can't have a 2016 movie on your list? Um, <laughs> Wikipedia lied. It's IMDb mostly too, because when you look at IMDb, they have like the film festival dates. It's like no, you go by the wide release date. Yeah, that always throws me off. It does. Like, uh, 
I just hate that the most. Um, uh, so with 2017 closing, uh, we had 2018 this year to look forward to in movies, and it doesn't look like there's a lot, but maybe there is. What? Uh, maybe we can. Oh. Maybe. What? What? There are some. Good <laughs> stuff I, I, this year. Let me let me finish. Let's talk yeah. about what we are looking for this year in 2018. Well, I think I speak for everyone when I say Deadpool 2. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> but the one I'm looking forward to actually is uh, uh Wreck It Ralph 2. I'm actually looking forward to that one. I I love the first one. I like the world they set up. I want to see what they do when they introduce the internet. It'll better not be the emoji movie. Oh. <laughs> I had to mention it. I had to mention it. Um, but yeah, this year, another big year for uh, superhero movies as well. I mean, so many sequels. Mm-hmm. So many... We got Black <laughs> Panther and Avengers and yeah, a lot of, a lot of forgetting stuff. They have like Panthers there, um, and a couple of remakes, mostly Death Wish and Scarface. Oh crap! That is coming out this year. That's right. I forgot about Scarface, but Death Wish. My God, fucking Eli Eli Roth. About all the people directed. Oh my God. Uh, and Bruce <laughs> Willis playing the part now. <sighs> Yes, Eli Roth, the man who remade one of his own movies. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, yeah, a lot of Tomb Raiders coming out this year. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Tomb Raider's coming. Maybe out. they can do a good Tomb Raider movie finally. I kind of like them. I will. So. I, I will say. I will state this: Tomb Raider <laughs> is like Maleficent. They hire Angelina Jolie to play a great character. She's meant to play. She does a good job. The story just goes all to hell. Then you got the uh, sequel to Pacific Rim Uprising. Mm-hmm. Uh, another Wes Anderson movie, Isles of Dogs, second stop motion film. Oh, uh, God. I'm sorry, but the Fantastic Mr. Fox kind of creeped me out a bit because those characters that just stare right into the camera, right into your soul. Like, Jesus. <laughs> uh. Ready Player One is coming up this year. If you read the book, mm. uh, Steven yep. Spielberg directed. Mm. Kind of excited for that one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm just imagine how much uh, money went towards copyright fees. You know, using all these. Characters. I know. I know all the licensing fees because it's it's pretty much like Who Framed Roger Rabbit of the century. <laughs> uh, of this decade. So I didn't mean century. Yeah. I meant this decade. Um. New Mutants. New Mutants coming out this year as well. That looks interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Rampage. Another video game movie where Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne the Rock jumps. <laughs> as we both shake our heads. Yeah. No. 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 Um, uh, the third movie in the Cloverfield franchise, God Particle. Uh, oh. Super Troopers uh, 2. Uh, yeah. Uh. Let's see. Yeah, Avengers: Infinity War, of course, and Maze. That's something else. Uh, oh, they actually made a movie of Slenderman. Slenderman. Uh, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, I've seen the trailer. I don't know yet. I don't know. Oh, we actually have the Han Solo movie, Solo: A Star Wars Story. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Directed by Ron Howard. Please be good. Please. <laughs> Yep, uh, Deadpool 2, like he said, Oceans 8. Mm-hmm. Basically, Rule 63 of Oceans, but I'm hoping for this one to be good. Uh, be good. Yeah. Uh, then you got uh, Incredibles 2 finally coming. Thank fuck! <laughs> Everybody's... And then, uh, uh, of course, uh, I'll tease this now. We're going to do something to celebrate our five-year anniversary and also... Uh, talking about the franchise that the sequel's coming out for Jurassic World Fallen hmm. Kingdom. Yes, we're going to do something Jurassic Park related, so stay tuned for that. Um, awesome. S- speaking of 
Uh, actually, speaking of Denis Villeneuve, Sicario 2 is actually coming out this year as well. Yeah. That, I saw that trailer. It looks really good. Yeah. It's not directed by him, but I uh, hope it's in good hands. I mean, um, I, I'm sorry. This this When I saw this, they're remaking Valley Girl. Uh, Valley Girl is a 1983 musical with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> and they're remaking it. And especially with the controversy that with YouTube now, uh, Valley Girl has Logan Paul in it. Uh, <laughs> wow. So, Awkward. Uh, the next Purge movie is coming out this year. Oh, they're still making them. Yes, they are. Yeah, I, I keep reading stuff that they're going to make a Purge movie about you know the very first Purge, you know, the origin of the Purge, but they keep like saying, nope, we got a different mind instead. We're going to do something different. It's like, come on! Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Venue 3. <laughs> Just retire, Adam. Just retire already. Alita? Battle Angel? That looks interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Robert Rodriguez. Um, James Cameron producing. So. Uh, <laughs> Mamma Mia, here we go again. <laughs> Indeed. In just um <laughs> Oh yeah, Mission Impossible Six. They're still making those movies with Tom Cruise and uh with Henry Kaivel who's gonna be in the movie with his mustache. Yeah, the mustache, the whole issue with uh <laughs> Justice League. <laughs> Justice you know? League. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's so noticeable. Um Oh yeah, Teen Titans go to the movies. They announced that. Christopher... Basically, Cartoon Network, Spongebob. <laughs> Christopher Robin, which is a the Walt Disney live-action remake of Winnie the Pooh. It, basically, Christopher Robin's older, and then he has to go back to Anchor Woods, so that'd be interesting to see if that goes. The, equal, the Equalizer 2. Mm -hmm. hmm. Alright, make a sequel to that. Uh, the I'd watch that. The Predator. The Predator the Predator is coming back this year with Shane oh. Black. Yeah, Shane Black. Yeah. yeah, the Predator. Uh, Funny, because the Predator killed him. <laughs> exactly. Now he's directing yeah, it. Yeah, but... Oh, I'm looking my. at the poster. It looks like it's taking place on Earth. I believe it is. Um, oh my god, there's actually a Barbie movie? A live-action Barbie movie. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, Scarface, like uh, he said. Which I'm kind of interested because it's take place uh, in a, like... Mexican going to like California, I think that kind of twist. Um, there's other movies in between. There's a lot of them. A lot of J Johnny English three. No. <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> oh, Robin Hood. Uh, no. 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 Again. Yeah. No. 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 This one's different. This is Robin Hood in the hood. No. Yes. No. Yes. Jamie that can't Fox, be real. Jamie Foxx plays Little John. No. Yes. You guys are messing with me. That's no. not real. No, it's serious. <laughs> um, oh my god. Yeah, it's it's by Lionsgate Summit Entertainment. Um, September twenty first. Ah. Produced um, by Leonardo DiCaprio because he just has a shit ton of money. Oh fuck, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> So there's. I finally won the Oscar. I can do what I want. Exactly. Uh, where was I? Uh, like there's there's a lot of other stories and movies in here. There's. Uh, what else? They have the remaking of Star Is Born, directed by Bradley Cooper. Starring as well, Lady Gaga. Um, mm -hmm. Venom. We had Venom. Um, with Tom Hardy. Being Venom. That's right. Um, oh, if you if you if you love uh, La La Land, you'll love Damien Chazelle's next movie, First Man, with Ryan Gosling, being about the first man on the moon. Oh. Hmm. Um, Goosebumps Horrorland sequel. From no Jack Black. No Jack Black. Just uh, make, let him play Slappy. That's it. I think they announced that. I think. Um, 
oh, Halloween's coming back. It's going to be a direct sequel to the first movie. They're, they're just, like, ignoring all the other movies. Yeah, it takes place... Wasn't what Halloween saying? 2 a direct sequel to the first movie? But yeah. they're, they're ignoring it now. They're just going, like, <laughs> this new movie? Direct sequel to the first movie. <laughs> just like uh, Halloween 20 years later ignored all the sequels, including the second one. But this one takes place 40 years later and is ignoring the H201 and all the other ones. But it has Jamie Lee Curtis, so it should be good. Uh, we've got uh, Warner Brothers' Andy Circus's Jungle Book Mowgli coming out. Uh, should be interesting to see how that compares to Disney's. Uh, <laughs> uh, the next X movie, X Men Dark Phoenix. Mm. Mm. Uh, a couple of Disney ones, I think A Wrinkle in Time and The Nutcracker in the Four Realms. Um, the f- uh, Will Ferrell and John C. Riley is Holmes and Watson. Of course they are. Of course they are. <laughs> this is going to be the same thing as Robin Hood, isn't it? Uh, of course, we got uh, The Grinch coming out as well this year. Um, the sequel to Fantastic Beasts. Mm. Cree 2. Yeah. Uh, like he said, Re- uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wrecking Ralph 2. Uh, <laughs> of course, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Sony Animation Spider-Man movie. This is probably how they made a deal with Marvel to get Spider-Man into the MCU. You gotta let us make an animated movie of our own. See how it does. The animation's like pretty slick, actually. Um, mm-hmm. Aquaman, so directed by James Wan. So, I mean, mostly known for Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> I mean, it could work. I mean, I liked Aquaman. I liked Aquaman and the Justice League movies, so. Um, well, correct me, I'm wrong. He was mostly known for the Saw movies, so maybe this could work. Yes, I was going to say, you're thinking of um, Justin Lin, you're thinking of. Fast and Furious. Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking, wait, you're thinking of two different people. Yes, James Wong is your man, because he did d- direct the Saw movies. So, um, And yes, Bumblebee the movie is coming out this year. Uh, direct, <sighs> directed by Travis Knight, who directed Kubo and the Two Strings in 2016. I mean, at least that was good, but I still don't have hope for... I mean, Bumblebee, Bumblebee. it's going to be set in the 80s, so set, like, 30, 30 years before the first movie. Oh, Michael Bay is nowhere to be found in the crash. This could actually work. Yeah, I mean, it's... Nope. He's a producer, damn it! I mean, the first picture has, you know, they they they, they leaked the picture and it's just, you know, the yellow beetle, you know, looking thing. Um, looked, looked like Herbie for a second. I was like, wait, what? What? what is this is a Herbie reboot. <laughs> um, and to round it off, we got Mary Poppins Returns sequel to Mary Poppins. And the uh, Queen biopic Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Mm-hmm. So 2018 has a lot of movies to offer. Who knows? We'll come back a year from now and see what we say about 2018. Um, any final thoughts about 2017? Uh, it had its ups. It had its downs. Hopefully most of them learned from their mistakes. <laughs> 2017 wasn't all bad. I think we had some really... Uh, really good movies that came out of it. Uh, Logan, of course, was the one that you know the two of us talked about. Uh, but, but you know, John Wick Two, uh, Wind River. I forgot to mention that one earlier. I watched that. That was that was the one I actually just watched today. That was really good. Uh, so there were a lot of really good movies that came out this year. A lot of crap, but <clears throat> let's not let's let's not think about the crap. Let's think about the good the good times. Yes, indeed. And and for the next episode, it's going to be a special treat because hopefully James comes back and Andy and James can talk about one of their favorite, favorite things. (laughs) 
Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about martial art movies, kung fu, whatever you want to talk about. It's kung fu time. Martial, Very nice. Uh, martial arts, the act of fighting. I figure it'd be a uh, come time to you know just get into it because I know Andy is a big fan of it. And I know James watches them as well, so put them <laughs> put them together. They'll be talking for ages, and I, plus we need a little variety when it comes to our episodes. So um, stay tuned for that, folks. Two weeks from now, we're gonna do martial arts movies, kung fu movies, karate movies, movies that <laughs> movies that are maybe are about Jim <laughs> Uh, Never say that again. I, I might talk about that. I mean, I have it on DVD. Oh, wow. I've never actually seen it all, so... <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, that's something we have to watch in the future, then. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching and listening. Uh, what is... Do, do the categories below. Please just tell me what is your forgettable disappointments, your surprises, your gems, your best and worst... Tell us in the comments below, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.